Georgie, I'm really excited to talk to you for She Can today. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Well, thank you for having me. It's lovely to be here. Um, I am the founder and CEO of Sherlux.com. We are a digital publisher. Um, I started the business in 2007, I think it was, um, February 2007. And we started as a directory of online retailers at a time when more and more brands were starting to sell online, but it was difficult to know who or where to find them. And Google certainly didn't show you the good ones. So we started as a directory of the best places to shop online. And long story short, um, we evolved into being a content publisher uh, with an email, um, a database um, that is is spoken to, marketed to every day, um, covering anything and everything relevant to modern women wanting to live their best life. We also um, have a male, an SL man product now, um, but essentially we keep women in the know, people in the know about, about fashion, beauty, lifestyle, also cover careers, health, wellness, travel, uh, finance, anything and, and everything, yeah, relevant to the modern woman. And, and over the years, we've diversified from, from, from being a purely, um, well, website, based publisher to um, broadcasting uh, across a number of verticals from uh, YouTube to social media, podcast, you name it, we are doing it. Georgie, you are doing an incredible job and you know it and you have three children and we've done a podcast together georgie i'd love to know more about your story how did you get to where you are today how did you think of uh, launching sheer lux how was that journey to get to where you are today which is massively successful with i don't know 150,000 um subscribers tell us a little bit about that 400 450,000 oh. Female and seventy thousand male subscribers. Um, we're we're creeping towards half a million women. Not quite there yet. Hoping for January. Um, Incredible. Um, but I I started um Sherlock's when I was very young. I I left university. I was at Edinburgh University, and I went into beauty marketing for a company called Coty, and uh, I actually worked for them throughout university as an intern and then I left university, went to Koti and was quite impatient to, to earn money to achieve and, and left to go and work in property marketing. And I did a brief stint uh, in property marketing and realized it wasn't for me and that um, I might earn more money, but it was pretty dry. I also toyed with um, being a personal shopper on the side and was always one of those people who others would say you where did you get that and I'd say I found it in H&M and they'd say why can't I find that stuff um so it was really a combination of sort of impatience and hunger to for my career and um and some natural flair for for finding the good stuff and it was really combining all of those and it, it made sense to be digital um so yeah, I did a year at Coty in London, having worked for them in Paris on my year abroad at university, a year for them in London. Then I went to um, to Savills um, in marketing. And it was actually while I was there that I started um, in the evening working on, on the plan for Shillux. And I launched the site on the 15th of February, 20, 2007. Um, just gave, gave equity to a developer who we then um, brought out um, uh, and yeah grafted and grafted I, I was just married I got married when I was just before my 26th birthday and my husband he's a he's an accountant so quite a natural pessimist he might say realist um, 
said, I think this is a really good idea and I think you should do it. So that kind of, I guess, spurred me on. He said, look, we don't need a huge amount to live. I'm going to support you. And he was really in the early stages of his career, I hasten to add. So, um, you know, it was quite a big decision, but we really believed in it. And and yeah, so I, I set off and worked every hour I could for, for many, many years. And um, yeah, and now here we are. I don't know, what are we? 15 years later, still going. <laughs> Incredible, Jordi. Incredible. So what would your main motivators be in growing Sheer Lux? Today, my main motivators today. Um, well, to not be left behind, I have to say, um, working in the digital space is um, not the most relaxing place to be. Uh, there's a lot of innovation going on. Um, a lot of competition, low barriers to entry. So so I'm motivated to not fail. And I think that's quite a classic um, concern of an entrepreneur is not to fail. And I think you, you have these, these targets and then the goalposts move and, and you sort of always want the next thing. And by the time you get to the thing you sort of want to get to, you know, you're, you're on to the next. So I guess, yeah, I'm motivated by not failing. Um, hugely I, I'm motivated by wanting to achieve something for my own sense of worth for my family um for what I leave behind um I believe in what we do uh, motivated to grow the business and, and hopefully eventually pass it on to someone else at some point um motivated by money um I've always liked nice things and holidays and I mean don't we all so yeah, does that answer your question? Absolutely. Um, Georgie, what do you think is your superpower? What makes you so good at, at what you do? I, I'm a, I'm a grafter. Um, I wasn't the most academic person at school. Um, I wasn't the least, but I. I grafted, I remember my English teacher saying, well, you'll definitely pass your English A-level, you know, you'll definitely get a D. And I was kind of mortified and went away and wrote an extra essay every day and ended up with an A, not because I'm, you know, the best at English. I just work really, really, really hard. And, and my father has a very good work ethic. Um, so I think that, you know, and, and anyone starting their own business, running their own business will know, you know, it's not easy and it takes a long time. And um, I'm also an ideas person and um, I think I have a, I've developed sort of commercial savvy and, and I think Sherlock's is, is sort of successful, feels complacent, but, you know, is doing well and continues to grow is, is sort of, it's an eye combined with, commercial savvy and understanding that everyone needs to make money our clients do and if they're going to come back stuff needs to convert so we, you know, as a publisher we really try and and educate and inspire and entertain but not be too edgy or too trend you know we're aware of the need to be inspiring but commercial so so probably yeah, that hard work combined with an eye and, and an understanding of the need to make money um is, is probably the factors. Georgie, I'm wondering, you've been really communicating with women for a long time. What would your top tips be in your phase of your life now to other women? Oh, uh, God, that's a, that's a good question. I, I think go for it. I mean, I think, um, it's amazing to be at the age of 42 and to see my peers doing amazing things and, and to have friends that I was at school with that I met early on in the industry doing amazing things and achieving. And it's really cool to sort of have been in it that long and be at an age where, you know, your friends are respected and, and your friends have still got years and years and years of sort of career growth ahead of them. And, and we employ quite a lot of mothers at Sherlock's now and quite a lot of them 
have had time off and had young children and um and have come to Sherlock's having had a bit of a, a career hiatus and and I would always urge women who sort of feel like their their skills have lapsed to realize that you know as women we are great multitaskers and have great life experience and um have so much to offer and and I think as a woman at 42 I have so many years of of career ahead of me so I really I really believe in women working and what they have to offer and and that it's never too late to go for it I love that advice and I always think that once we get sort of to middle age it's really harvest time and there are so many women who don't go back into the workplace and I think that really has to change so thank you for that excellent advice Georgie, I'm wondering what are your plans or dreams for your future? What's in store for you, for Sheer Lux? Uh, I look well, we I have launched another business um this year called Lux and Co, which is a branding, design, and storytelling business. And uh we have around 10 clients now and it's growing and it's very exciting and and I'm taking sort of 15 years of working with with brands and seeing what consumers respond to and interact with and having created content for that long and, and taking that knowledge and helping brands with great products have their best chance of success. Um, we're working with an amazing jewelry business and beauty businesses, materials businesses, a travel business, all of which have great products, but can sort of up their curb appeal, if you like. And for me, it's really... It's, it's really exciting to sort of see what I can add and um, how we can sort of uh, use our experience and use the Shillax audience for consumer insights, etc. cetera. Um, so I'm really excited for Lux & Co. Um, I also, also work with, um, well, I've been involved with a charity in the ex-offending space, um, helping ex-offenders get into employment and um I might not look like your stereotypical um prison governor but it was actually something I wanted to do uh, a long time ago and followed a different path but uh I'm really enjoying getting involved and actually I feel like as a woman you know most people who re-offend are males and the 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 numbers of prisons in this UK are, are you know in the main men um and I feel like as a woman we can be quite effective and, and disarm people in a way that is is different to perhaps men working with other male ex-offenders. So, and actually as a whole business, we've been involved and it, it's been really effective. So uh, I really believe in that and love that. And, and actually you and I um, have a connection via being parents of a neurodiverse child. And um, I feel, I feel, I feel it's really important to use the Sherlock's platform and our reach to talk about neurodiversity as we've, talked about offending and why people end up offending and how many of those that offend grow up without a father figure and grow up you know in underprivileged um environments um i feel i feel also that um i've got a duty as you know the mother to my son um and with this platform to really use it to 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 make the conversation around neurodiversity more mainstream and you brilliantly came on our podcast a couple of weeks ago and it was incredibly emotional for me um hearing you speak and uh you were phenomenal and the feedback that we've had to that podcast to the conversation to making the conversation mainstream has really blown me away and you know the numbers speak for themselves at, at how many how many children how many well how many of us are neurodiverse um and yeah, I, I'm excited to use our platform um, to to have that conversation. Um, so yeah, Georgie, you are fabulous. I enjoyed talking to you so much, and I think there is so much more in the neurodiversity front to do. So thank you so much for chatting to me today. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much for asking me. <laughs>